Welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at the clone and the healing tools. These are really powerful tools in GIMP and they're not incredibly difficult to use. I'm gonna bring in some images to uh, illustrate how these work. We can either go to File, Open, and I can find them on my computer, but I'm gonna bring in three at once. I'm gonna just navigate to the location, which is on my desktop. I'm gonna left click and hold and select all three, then left click and drag all three of them just into this project area. What that's gonna do is import all three of these images and I can toggle between which one I'm working on just across this top uh, selection bar up here. And so the first one I wanna show is uh, the clone tool. So this is a picture um, of just me standing in the snow. And if I wanted to use the clone tool, I can actually clone uh, multiple copies of myself standing here. So the clone tool, if we hover over, it has the C is the shortcut key to select it. We can also just left click on it. And it has a lot of the same options that we'd be familiar with other tools. We can change the size of the brush, the aspect ratio, all these different things. Um, but what we really wanna do, I'm gonna size it to be about the size of my leg. Maybe that's about uh, good enough right there. And then to use this tool, how does it tell us here? What we do is we hold down the control key and then left click once. So I'm gonna hold down the control key and left click at my foot down here. And that creates a dotted circle around my foot and now I can click anywhere else in the image and my foot will start to be drawn right there. I'm just left clicking and holding and it's just redrawing myself here. I'll do control Z because to make this more realistic, I'll keep that selection there. And again, to make that selection, you have to hold the control key and then left click to choose this, your starting selection. And then if I left click and hold right here, for example, I can sort of put my foot right here and just draw this very quickly, a clone of myself standing in the snow over here. And the more time I take, I can get it pretty looking pretty good. And we, notice over on the left-hand side, it's showing me where I'm at on the source, I guess, the source part of the image. And then over here, I'm just drawing. So I can sort of try to make sure I f I've got like a feather on this tool right now, which means that the edges are sort of a faded, kind of fade out. It's not like a hard drawn line. Anyway, uh, there we go, that's not too bad. So I've got a clone of myself, and as long as I keep holding down the mouse, the left mouse button, I can come over and retouch up any of these areas. If I unclick the mouse button, and then I, I try to click again, it's going to start my source at that same point that I was at. So I'll do Control Z to undo that. But that's a very quick look at this, and you notice if we zoom in here a little bit, we can see it doesn't look exactly right. The colors are off a little bit on this side and that sort of fades into, there's some missing data there kind of. But not too bad for just illustrating how that clone tool works. A lot of times people will use this to do uh, face swaps. They'll select one person's face and then go over to the next area and, and add in, you know, replace just the face of a, of a person. Um, I wanna show you uh, another tool we can do. So we could do the clone tool. You could imagine erasing a part of an image. We could clone these rocks by holding down the control key while we're still on the clone tool. And then we could clone myself out and put some rocks here. But the problem is you get some strange looking things. So if I zoom in now, it's kind of hard to see here, but we're really getting, you can't really see all the detail in the rock. And especially with the trees, it might look kind of strange. The point that the trees overlap with each other, it just doesn't look, actually that looks pretty good. But a better tool to use in this case is the healing tool. So I'll do control Z. Uh, the healing tool is right next to the clone tool. It has this band-aid icon on it. Oh, and I wanted to mention your icons may look different. Um, like I mentioned at the start of this, I'm using a different version of GIMP. So if your icons look different, that doesn't really matter. Different operating systems and different versions display the icons differently. Um, anyway, I'll select this healing tool and the healing tool works very similarly. We hold down the control key to select an area. And I'm gonna select this area right here, control and then uh, left click. And that selects a pattern. So this area is the pattern I'm going to use. And now it behaves the same way as the clone tool where I can left click and then I can come and just sort of paint this out. Um, one thing I wanna be careful of, I should show this with the clone tool. If I go to the clone tool, it's a lot more pronounced. With the clone tool, if ever I go too far, so if I start erasing this, but I go too far, it's going to start cloning over my mouth again. Even though it's not really there, it still remembers that old part of the image. So you have to be careful of where you set your reference point 
because if you're not careful like the sky here, if I start cloning down here and then move up, I'm gonna get the sky at a point I don't really want it. So it always just stays relative to where you're at. I don't, I don't know if I touched on the healing very much, but the healing, what it really does is take a pattern and then it uses a lot more processing power, so it's a lot slower, but it sort of heals and it sort of, it sort of eliminates that overlap so you don't get that look of like part, parts of the images are overlapped. If there's a pattern background or like grids or something more complex and just a solid color, uh, that's a good application to do the healing. But play with healing and cloning, you'll notice a difference. Another good example of something we could do is these clouds. If we made our the size go down, it's really easy to just get rid of a cloud. We'll make this bigger. So if we wanted to, we choose this as our reference point. We maybe just go to clone again for this one. And then we can just kind of erase that cloud, but we're using this background. But again, if ever we get into our point, if I start erasing this cloud, but I go down, it's going to redraw the cloud lower. So just be aware of how that works. If your point is too close to what you're working with, uh, you may have to select a point and then you know, make sure there's nothing in the way like this mountain here or we accidentally dry it up. As you play with that more, you'll get more familiar. One more example I wanna show you is this picture here, and this is one where the healing tool makes a lot of sense. This is just an old image that has some lines. If I hold down the shift and plus key on my keyboard, I can zoom in here, and we can see these lines uh, where it's like a fold and like some tears in the image. Well, we, can, we could clone directly, but let me come over here and uh, take the size down a little bit. And then we can uh, grab our healing tool and we'll select this area right here, hold down control and left click. So this is our target area, our source target. And then as I left click here, I can heal. Oh, oh, I forgot. This one has a, an interesting issue with it. This particular image down here at the bottom, it says healing does not operate on indexed layers. That's because I'm using a black and white image. It doesn't have a color, doesn't have color channels. So if you run into this problem, what you need to do is go to uh, uh, image mode and go to RGB. It's on indexed right now. That doesn't happen often. This happened to be a scanned image and it's black and white. And so for that reason, it, it's an indexed uh, mode. Um, anyway, now I can change this. So I can click here and I can left click and erase this tear line. I have an example of this um, uh, several years ago in an older version of GIMP. Um, I'll show you that now. This is repairing an old image um, and kind of applying a little bit of color adjustment, but for the most part, using the healing tool to get rid of some of the tears and blemishes uh, in this old kind of battered image. Well, hopefully you found that informative, guys. Uh, go ahead and play with the clone and healing tool. There's a lot that you can do between uh, between getting rid of things on an image and repairing uh, parts of images and even just cloning over. Uh, there's quite a bit you can do with just these without ever having to dive into selection, which we're going to cover in, in future videos and some of these more advanced techniques. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.